Cactoidy, or the largest male, has dropsy, unfortunately. But I've been feeding him, I'm going to start feeding him live brine shrimp and frozen brine shrimp. Uh, baby brine, frozen baby brine shrimp, I got some of that. At first I thought it was just fry, and then I fed it to the guppies, and the female gazi, and they loved it. So, maybe I'll feed it to them, or probably just see it for fry. But, uh, he's still in there. His color's gotten a lot paler, but all the females and the uh, smallest male are doing fine. That's good. I just did a, tw I'm doing a 21st 5% water change. I already drained it. I just have to fill the rest back up with this fucking bit there. I just went, came back from the fish store. Ah, they didn't have any, uh, pistogrammas. But, they did have some really cheap brine shrimp. Um, so, I was glad they had it really cheap. It's cheaper than the other places I went. And, or, same, pretty expensive, or expensive. When you think about price, and you just look at price. But when you look at the portion, it was a lot cheaper. Uh, two bucks. It was six bucks for all of this, so it's pretty good price. So what I did was I took a uh, a Aquatech small or medium bo uh, bottle or box of activated carbon. I used ha like two thirds of the carbon. I just poured the rest out because I had no use for it. I don't even know why I bought it in the first place. What was I thinking? Anyway, so I took this. And I took my scissors and a pen, I poked a hole and then made it a little bit wider, put it in the top, uh, just to, just wide enough so that could fit in really smoothly. Uh, you want it really snug, but I kind of made it a little bit too big, so I used some super glue, which is, it says toxic and bad, but it, it's fine. Uh, just make sure it doesn't have any, uh, some chemicals in it are really bad. So, uh, yeah, so I've plugged it into my air pump and uh got bubbling up so they don't stay in one spot and then die. I think I have some food for them somewhere. But I'm about to feed them to my fish. So let me just go there are a couple ways you can feed them. You can get a net and just scoop them out. You can take a uh like a turkey baster and get them out. You could just pour them in there. I wouldn't recommend that because then, you know, you get salt in your tank. I mean, some salt is good, but most salt, not so good. Okay, so, just drill, take a hole, or make a hole. You can drill a hole, whatever. Just make sure you seal it with some silicone or some, uh, some super glue or whatever. So it doesn't move all the time. Uh, depending on how much water, like, I just got it to the rim like that pretty perfect really lucky when I put them in here but uh make sure it's not there's not too much water like if you if you have a really big bag don't put get a really big box or a bottle or whatever make sure you have enough space for the water at least enough space to put all the brine shrimp in and not and not have them really crowded so I'm probably gonna get some more once this supply is kind of down, down, and maybe, maybe a few more portions than I did than I got this time. Uh, so I'm gonna show you one of the ways you can feed brine shrimp. Ah, let me get a net. I'll just let you guys look at them for a sec. Uh, Find a small net. Uh, well, I'll just do a quick update on the ten gallon in the kitchen. All right. So there's a female guys. She's pretty kind of scared. So I've two neon tetras in here. I don't know why. I still I thought about taking them out, then I just realized it'd be too much work for right now. So let's see if I can find any more of the branch, baby brine shrimp. Uh, no, I can't. Well, anyway, so what you want to do when you're feeding baby brine shrimp and brine shrimp, and you have like a power filter like I do on this tank, you want to turn off the filter if it's a power, if it's like a power filter, so the food doesn't get sucked in, uh, and then feed them. Wait till they eat it all, 
if you think they need more, you can feed them more. Let me plug this in. So I've got this water sprite, this weird random purple plant that I took out of a 29 yeah, in there. Uh, if, once you, when you're pregnant to fish or you want to try and breed them, live foods or frozen meaty foods are really good for them. Uh, so yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Uh, I'm just going to show you how one of the ways that I kind of, I just thought of half of it right now. The other way, I, I used, already did that before. Uh, I wish I had a tripod right now. You just have to try and do it with one hand. Uh, I'm just try and open this. There we go. If you have it super glued like I got it. Uh, I want to turn it the opposite, turn the whole entire thing the opposite way that you're screwing it. So there's two being out somewhere to twist around. You don't have to do that. Just take that right out. Make sure there's nothing on it. Okay, so there are a few brown shrimp on it. They'll be able to survive right now. Uh, just take a sieve, put some tubing on it. Just stick that in there. Pull on it, suck it out. And then, voila, a whole bunch of brine shrimp. So there will also be some brine shrimp in the tube. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, just leave that in here for right now. Just see if it'll hold. There we go. Uh, then you open it. And then, you might want to take a small or finer net than I have right here. This is the only one I have right now. And then you just... Ooh, this is going to be hard with one hand. Uh, just use my knee. There we go. Stick it right there. Uh, oops. Alright, uh... This is going to be hard. I'll just put that there. Put the net over the top. And then... Squirt in there. If you have a smaller net, you can just go in there and scoop it out like a brine shrimp net. Those are really small. And then you have a few brine shrimp in there. That's barely enough, but I'm going to do a couple of quick feedings. So uh, I'll just show you what it looks like, because I have just fed my fish, literally just fed them. Uh, let's see if I can make my own tripod. Set it down there, zoom in a little bit. Alright, so you've got your net right here. Take it and just release into the tank. Get this back real quick. And as you can see, they go crazy for live brown shrimp. I show you how they love frozen brown shrimp. Now watch how they gobble down these live shrimp. Live brown shrimp are uh, a lot better for their instinct to try and see if you try and look if you're going for like an instinctive kind of tank this is a, live foods are a lot better than frozen foods or dry, dry foods one they they have a lot of protein and they're really good for them make sure you still feed a lot of uh, plant-based foods if you feed if you feed only live food and two they are or yeah they have a lot of protein in them two it helps their, yeah, it helps bring out their natural instincts because most fish that you can buy, except for cardinal tetras and a few other fish that, that they tell you is wild caught, uh, don't are usually tank bred for generations, hundreds of generations, 
which means they've lost most of their natural instincts. So that's why cichlids are getting harder and harder to breed, because their natural parental instincts don't allow them to defend their fry when they're in the community tank. So, uh, well, let me show you that peacock good and go. She is fat right now. I mean, just really fat. She, she needs to stop eating. <laughs> anyway, so brings out their natural instincts. If you want to show maybe your kids or maybe some friends over or your wife or whatever, girlfriend, that's, this is really good for showing their, showing what they look like in the wild almost. I thought about making this a biotope tank and then I realized biotopes, Amazon Basin biotopes can be really fun, but I can't find the right driftwood and I really don't know where I'm going to put that lutea. And the dwarf sag, I'll just have to get dwarf hair grass if I want to do a biotope. So, it's, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I, I'd have to take out of this tank that I don't really want to do. I can do a partial biotope, just only Amazon swords and uh, dwarf sag and lutea. That'd be kind of a, kind of a nice sort of biotope. I can take out that water spray. Water spray is basically just in there right now, just lower the ammonia and the nitrite and the nitrate. Prasco, the only thing that's in there. So, as you can see, only vine shrimp left are the ones kind of camouflaging with this brown. They completely devoured all the other vine shrimp. That's how much they love it. Yeah, they love it. Alright, I'm going to feed them a few more times and I'll be right back. For what? Let's see, what, what am I going to do for the second half? Oh, whatever, just tell you when I get there. Alright, feed him more time. Hey guys, uh, here's a computer episode and a update kind of thing. Uh, so, I've been searching for different kinds of pistogrammas because my male cockatoidy has some kind of disease where the... Uh, fins stick out from the body. If anyone knows what that is, tell me please uh, and how to uh, fight it. But in case he dies, I found a p I'm trying to find either more or another male cockatoidy, hopefully an orange flash. There are a few like two different shades of orange for orange flash and I'm not sure which one I want. Uh but uh, another one I found is the Epistogramma Hida number two, which is a variety or a variation of the regular, which is that one is the regular one, and then the number two, which has been specially bred in line breeding and everything, is that one. Uh, can't really find where I can buy it though. But, uh, if anyone knows where I can get this thing, I would love to hear it, because I just really want to find these things. Alright, uh, so I'm going to show you what the, what's up to deal with the 29 gal. Uh, wait one sec, I'm going to get some shoes on. Yeah, so, as you can see, doing a water change for what, third time in 24 hours. I did one in the last video, I think, and uh, I did one right before this, and now I'm doing another one because, here he is. My male, like I said, is a weird disease or infection where the scales pop up. You can't really see it. It actually looks pretty creepy. This used to happen with my guppies sometimes. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, I think it's dropsy. I'm not totally sure. But uh, if you guys know, please tell me. I just want to say that again. Because uh, I really want to figure out how to get rid of it. Because if he dies, and it's going to take forever to get a new, a new male. Or just a pair of he does too. Uh, Corys are doing a f doing fine. They're really big. 
and I'm not going to feed these guys for another two days or two or three days because I fed them. I couldn't, or my little experiment thing with the uh, bottle, I was just trying to figure out a way to make a kind of a geyser where the air pressure goes in. There's only one exit, which is, uh, one exit, which is where the brine shrimp, like, okay, so let me just try and explain this better, okay. So this is where the air would be pumping in, pumping down into there or just up there. And then you'd have another tube, or I had another tube in here, uh, right there. So all this crap right there is just uh, super glue. Uh, another tube would go in one of these holes, uh, go down into the water, the other side from the bubbler, and then... Uh, you could, there are two different ways. You could, one, have the air restricted to a certain pressure, so you so it goes pretty slow, so like one drop per minute or one drop per second, where that would be a few, a few, one or two brine shrimp every once, or like a second or two, so you get a continuous, uh, continuous food of live brine shrimp. Uh, I tried that. I tried the, the one of the first way is just to put two holes in there, close them both up. One is air, one is going into your tank, and then you just see what happens. The other option is to have two holes, or three holes. One is air, one is open, and one is regular tubing. And to get the guys are going, you just plug up one of the holes. Uh, I don't know what went wrong with it when I tried this out, but. Something went wrong, and I got a spill, so I got to clean that up. This is a pain. Uh, I decided to use the drawer that what used to be in here. I had two of those drawers when it wasn't a stand from a fish tank. So I just used the other drawer as like a little platform and do stuff. Prime, still pretty much full. Flourish, I've been feeding it. Uh, uh, Sick and flourish. Uh, I, oh, I want to show you guys another thing on the computer right after I show you something. I just want to get a shot of the uh, Good and Gobies. If you can see the bottom of that male right there, you can see how fat they are. They ate so much of the brine shrimp. I don't even know if they left any for the Right there, this meh, flaring. Yeah, she's angry. She actually feeds off of that sponge. It's pretty much worth the main food sources. So yeah, I'm gonna do a couple more water changes to get the water pretty much pure. So back to the computer. This uh something I wanna show you guys called the Okay, right, this is just the first one that I found. It's not the one that I wanna buy from. But anyways, it's called the Aqua Breed. 1000 or the Aqua Breed 200. So basically, it's uh, a newer kind of brine shrimp hatchery. The 200 is a brine shrimp hatchery, just a brine shrimp hatchery. Uh, the 1000, though, is a brine shrimp hatchery, and it is a uh, and it is a what cultivation unit, which means you can grow out the brine shrimp to adulthood, which usually takes two weeks. So, um, so that's pretty much it. I'm thinking about getting it. The, on this side, it's 29, or I mean, the Aqua Breed 200 is $29, Aqua Breed 1000 is $79. But, on a site called, what, is Affordable Aquatic Supplies, it is only... What fifty nine ninety nine, which is sixty bucks. So usually it's a hundred bucks for the one thousand. So that's a thirty forty dollar discount. So you know it's it's a good. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry about the noise, my family. Shut up. All right. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, oh, another thing is the Galaxy Rosebora, Rosebora, tet, or, uh, the Galaxy Rosebora, or the Celestial Pearl Diana, Danio, 
It's a Danio, so if you hear Gallic, it's the same thing, but it's a Danio. It's been, it used to be thought as a Rasboro, but it, it was proved to be a Danio. Uh, it's pretty cool. It doesn't get bigger than an inch, you, uh, usually. Uh, on one site called Seriously Fish, they just, they said it was only get what? The largest specimen ever found was 2.1, or 21 millimeters. Uh, I'm not so sure if that's still true, because I've heard people say they get to an inch and a half, they get to an inch, so they probably stay around that size. So, uh, right here, they're $5 each. Uh, a site that I closed earlier, they're, what, 4 or $3 each. Or five dollars each. I'm not sure. I don't really remember. Uh, another site that I want you guys to go see is Epistogramma.com. It's run by Ted Judy, uh, who, if you know, but know the magazine is uh, TropicalFishHobbyist.com. Uh, I subscribe. It's a great, great. Uh, Great magazine for all you fish lovers out there. Uh, you can, anyway, back to pistogram.com. You can post questions, post pictures, uh, help people out. It's pretty much it. Another place that has the uh, pistogram cockatoides, orange flash, and double red, and a gazi double red. And uh, what else? Bad Dario Dario. So, I buy from these guys, but their shipping's kind of expensive. And they are in California, so it'd be really hard on the fish. Go all the way from the west coast to east coast. So. That's another shot of the orange flash. This is what I'm trying to find. So I'm having a really hard time finding. Do you guys know where to find any Epistogramma Vegeta number two? Not number one. Number two. Or Epistogramma Cockatoides Orange Flash. Please tell me that too, because I'm. Working my butt off. I'm trying to find this thing. Well, anyway, so that's it. See you next time.